Hi everyone, it's Jeff from Avada here. Today we have a video showing you how you can use ACF repeater fields with Avada. In a previous video, how to create a recipe website with Avada and ACF Pro, we set up a recipe collection using ACF Pro on the bakery pre-built site. Take the time to watch that video first before you watch this one, I'll link it below. Ok, if you're up to speed on what we did in the first video, let's take this build even further using ACF repeater fields to step it up to the next level. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. Ok, so here we are on the bakery site, much as it was at the end of the last video. I have used ACF Pro for the custom post type instead of a plugin, as I previously used, and I think I've changed my avatar but for all functional purposes it's the same as it was. We have an ACF field group called Recipe Data with a bunch of fields added, a recipe custom post type with some recipes, and a conditional layer used only on the recipes post type pulling that ACF data into the page title bar and content layout sections. If we look at a recipe on the front end we can see it looks good and it's pulling all the info. But one area that could be improved is the method area. Currently this information is all entered manually in the recipe itself, but I'd like that info to be coming from the layout as well. To start we'll need to add some ACF repeater fields. I'll come back to ACF and add a new field. I'll select repeater as the field type and give it a label of ingredients. The field name populates itself so I can move on to add a subfield here and this will have a field type of text. I'll call this one ingredient. And that's it, let's close that field. Ok, so now let's make another field. Again it will be the repeater type with a name of method and we will also need some subfields here as well. The first one will be text and I'll call that title. The second one will be a WYSIWYG editor with the label of content and the third one will have the field type of image and I'll call that image as well. I'll leave the return format on image array here on the presentation tab, yeah I think I will leave that preview size at medium. Ok, let's close that and save our changes here. Alright, let's now look at what these repeater fields are going to replace. If I just go to a recipe post here and scroll down, we can see the method information has been added manually through the builder into each recipe. This is inefficient and so this is the part we're going to take advantage of our new ACF repeaters to replicate. So in the recipe post, I'm going to delete this which means there's actually no manual content in this post at all. It's all ACF data that's going to be displayed through layouts and postcards. So I'll save that recipe and do the same on the others. Ok, I've deleted all my manual content and refreshed the post, and now as we scroll down, we can see the new repeater fields we added to ACF Pro. Here are the ingredients, and below this is the method. The recipe information still has to be entered into here, but it's now completely separate to the design. The whole recipe is just information, and the design is being controlled by the layout sections. In that way you might have an editor adding the recipes, but they don't have any control over how the content looks on the front end. Ok, so I'll just enter some recipe data into here so we have something to work with in the layout. Be back in a minute. So as you can see I've added the ingredients and the various steps. There's the ingredients repeater with the ingredient subfields, and the method repeater with the title, the content and the image subfields we added earlier. So now we need to edit the layout. The page title bar layout is still all good and I won't need any changes there so let's edit the recipe content layout section. Now the part we want to update is the ingredients and method section. This is just a container with the content element in it, pulling the information from the actual recipe. And under that is the pagination element. But before I delete that container with the content element, I'll just move this pagination element down into the gallery column. As I'm using the sticky preview style for the pagination, it doesn't matter where it's placed. Ok, so let's now delete that container with the content element. So now I will add a container under the author and social sharing container. I might make this a combo of one quarter, one half and one quarter. I'll add a title into the first column and call it ingredients. And I'll just make it a H2. And under that I'll add a checklist element like before. I'll set the content to be dynamic data and select ACF repeater and for the field I'll set this to be the ingredients field. 
Now in the items, I'm good with the icon here, so under the list item content, again I'll select dynamic data. And this time I'll scroll down to the ACF fields and choose ACF repeater subfield. And I'll enter the subfield name of ingredient. Okay, now for my second column. Here I'll again add a title, but this time the content is going to be dynamic data. I'll select an ACF repeater single value this time, and set the repeater field name to method, the subfield name to title, and the index to 1. So in other words, the title of the first step in the method. Again, I'll make this a H2. Under this I'll add a text element. Again, it will be an ACF repeater single value. And this time it will be method for the repeater field name, but content for the subfield name. And again, this will have an index of 1, so this pulls the content of step 1. Finally, in the third column, I'll add an image element. Again, we will choose an ACF repeater single value as the dynamic content, and I'm sure you can figure out that this time the values will be method, image, and 1. So in these two columns, we're pulling the first row of all three subfields from the method repeater. Let's just save this and have a look at it in the live builder. Now as you can see, that's just step one. What about the other steps? Well, we could duplicate the middle and right columns here and change the index on all three elements to two instead of one, but that's manual and each recipe is going to have a different number of steps. So while this method demonstrates how to pull individual ACF repeater data directly, it's not the best setup here. So let's do something else. Instead, I'm going to make a postcard and pull the ACF data through that. So I'll head to the library and create a new postcard called Method. For a start, I'll head to the Page Options tab and Preview, and set the preview to be 75% width, as that's about the width this postcard will display at. So now I'm going to add a nested column element with a two-thirds, one-third layout. In the first one, I'll add a title, and in the dynamic content, I will choose ACF Repeater Subfield, and set the subfield name as title. This will pull our step titles. I'll just make that a H3. Okay, under this I'll add a text block element. Here in the dynamic content I will again choose ACF repeater subfield, and this time set the subfield name to content. Finally in the right column I'll add an image element, and do the same thing. This time the name of the subfield will be image. Okay, let's save that. Now back in our layout section, I'll just save and refresh to pick up our postcard. I'll delete the two columns that held our method content, and instead I'll add a three-quarter column here. In this, I'll add a title. It will say method, and be a H2. Now under this, I'll add a postcards element. I'll choose method as the postcard to use, and for the content source, I'll set it to ACF repeater. And in the repeater field, I'll choose method. Yeah, that's going to work. On the design tab, I will just set the number of columns back to 1, so our content fills the column. OK, that should do it. Let's save that layout and come to our recipes and view a recipe on the front end. That loads and now we have our repeated steps displayed. Fantastic. That's a much better method for this situation. OK, before I wrap up, I've got two more quick examples to show you of how we could take advantage of ACF data for this recipe collection. So I'll come back to the layout section and to start, I'm going to add an alert at the top of the post if there are a lot of steps in the recipe. So I'll make a new 1-1 container, and move it to the top, and in that I'll add the alert element. I'll set it to notice, and add my notice here. But I don't want this showing on recipes with only a few steps, so I'm going to edit the column, and go to the extras tab, and add some rendering logic. For the condition type, I'll select ACF repeat account, and for the field name, I'll add method. Then in the comparison operator here, I'll choose greater than, and in the condition value, I'll add 5. So what this says is to only render this column when there are more than 5 steps in the method. Awesome. That will work just fine. OK, at the bottom of the layout section, I also want to add a new section for recommended recipes. But to do that, I have to come back to ACF and add one more field. This will be a relationship field and I will call it Recommended. I'll also filter by post types to recipes. OK, let's save that again, 
And now I'll just head to the back end of one of the recipes and refresh. Now if I scroll down I can see our new field. I'll just select two recipes here and update the post. Now we have to display them. Back in the layout section under the gallery I'll add a new 1-1 container and I'll just add a title to start. I'll call it if you like this one and make it a H2. Under that I'll add a postcards element. For the design I'll just choose this postcard I imported from Avada Studio. It just displays an image and a title. So that's just what I want here. Then I'll set the content source to ACF relationship and the relationship field to recommended. Now I'll just go to the design tab and change the number of columns to two. Now not every recipe might have recommendations for other relevant recipes so we might also use some rendering logic on this container to sort that. I'll just edit the container, go to the extras tab and add some rendering logic. For the condition type, I'll select ACF relationship count. And for the field name, I'll add recommended. Then in the selector here, I'll choose greater than. And in the condition value, let's make this zero. So on any recipe that has at least one recommendation, this container will render. Okay, that's the functionality all sorted. I just want to make a few design tweaks here, but they're not relevant to this video. So just give me a sec. Okay, I've styled the layout a bit more and saved it. Now let's have a look at the front end. I'll come back to the home page here and select a recipe. It loads and it all looks really awesome. We can see the original page title bar and our author and social sharing section. And under that we can see the ingredients for this recipe in the left column. And in the right column it's displaying our postcard with the method repeater, showing all the specific steps. And below this is our gallery. We can also see the sticky pagination halfway up here. Note how there's no alert on this recipe, as it doesn't have more than five steps. And there's no recommended recipes at the bottom, as I didn't set any on this recipe. But if I go to the next recipe, we can see the alert at the top, as this recipe has many steps. And if I scroll down to the bottom, we can see there are two recommended recipes here. And basically all of this content is being pulled into these recipes via ACF Pro. How cool is that? Okay, time for me to go. I have some bread to bake. This concludes our video on using ACF repeaters with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.